Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon Guys here, bringing you my review for the latest episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. All the Madam's Men. And this is another pretty good episode, and gave us the clear endgame goal of what Ada's trying to get after. And also kind of like really cool tidbits and everything throughout the episode. So, we begin with seeing Bakshi, who is brought back as a news reporter, mouthpiece for Hydra, talking about everything going on, the death of the Patriot and all that. And during one of the little kind of like Hydra things that was going on, we saw in memoriam for Garrett, the character that Bill Paxton played earlier in S.H.I.E.L.D., and I thought that was a nice kind of touch that they added in there to kind of acknowledge his character and everything throughout the framework and him passing. So... That aside and everything, we're talking about, like, all the stuff going on with the Patriot and everything, and we see Daisy busting out of her shell and everything, and maybe, like, all right, we got to get out of here, and, of course, the guard comes in, and they have to go off. And I thought it was kind of weird that they didn't go after Radcliffe to get him out as well, but it seemed that it went fast, so fast, with the whole response and everything with Hydra going on, that they weren't able to get to him. So we see him going through cubicles, doing really cool fight scenes with Daisy, using all the stuff that she's learned from May, and getting the kind of lowdown of what May is trying to take her and everything. And she's like, alright, we're trying to head towards the elevators. Now we see this really cool scene of May do this, like, cartwheel through the air and taking out, like, three Hydra agents with her guns. It's like, that was pretty badass. So, they're able to get to the elevator, and who comes out? Ada and... Her lunkies, and she's like talking to him, and like, see, even in the simulation, your true na natures never change. May's always the warrior, Max always the protector, and Fitz is the romantic. And it's interesting to see how she's been able to like get into each one of their psyches and understand everything about them. And that kind of is the crux of how Ada has been able to take and reshape Fitz. She's figured out what she believes is the main core of his personality and pretty much warped him into this, the weird doctor that we see in the simulation. And it's funny that she's talking about this because Daisy's like, what, nothing for me? And then she quakes Ada outside of the Triskelion and I'm not just talking like a little quake. She throws her from the building and she smacks down on the ground and it was like really badass. And it just goes to show that, like, Ada did not expect that whatsoever. And seeing her then remove herself from the framework was just nuts. Then that confirmed that she has to put herself within the framework to, I guess, effectively control her Ophelia personality. Because that also adds into wrinkles of, like, okay, Fitz is always in there. Ada's not always in there. How does that work? Because, does she let a program run it? How does that... If she leaves, does, like, a subroutine kind of take over? That's kind of interesting to think about. But what we've seen now is that she's usually been the one orchestrating it, so she has to put herself in the framework. So she's out kind of, like, recalibrating herself. The superior then comes and is like, I never thought I'd say this, but it's weird to see a machine on edge. And she's like, I'm not on edge, I'm just recalibrating. And she's talking about the whole situation that's going on. And while we're seeing them walking across the room, we see that Mace's, Mace's body is removed from his part that they've been hooked up to the framework in. She's talking about how May has been like fighting the programming of the framework and all that, and that she's going to... She's really messing some stuff up. The superior then tries to kill May, but finds out that he can't shoot her. And he's like, why can't I do this? You've got a body built like me. It's part of our programming. We are supposed to protect these people unless they're a threat to the framework. And we have found two such agents, Daisy and Simmons. So they're like, all right, I want you to find them while I deal with everything inside the framework. And it's like, okay, let's see how this goes. So... The main parts of the episode then deal with May and Daisy trying to pretty much get back to get to the resistance because you see them going through the streets and everything, trying to find cars, kind of like talk through the whole situation. May's starting to question stuff about her, like, you were able to use those powers pretty quickly. She's like, I've had practice. I'm like, 
What? Uh, never mind. Uh, it's fine. I... This is just like a hangover with bees. Don't worry. Don't listen to the crazy person. Not time to do it. I'm like, Daisy, you're smart with this. You know when to avoid certain subjects and let it occur naturally. Because this may is starting to break through the programming of the framework. You can't someone with too much at once. They start to shut down like Mace did. So, they pretty much get this crappy car and pretty much go off to meet up with Contact. And of course, it doesn't work that well because Contact's like, who are you? What's going on? Well, an SUV full of Hydra agents come at him, but Daisy does this cool move where she quakes back the grenade into the car to blow it up. So, that's kind of where they're at. Then we kind of get the overall feel of what's going on at the Resistance with S.H.I.E.L.D. We see that everybody's kind of like downtrodden, that Mace is gone, their like leader is gone from them, and Coulson's like, well, this is usually the thing that kills movements. It's like, well, we just got to keep going. Ward wants to go out and find Daisy. He goes to Coulson, interestingly enough, because you would think that Ward would be the one that would be in charge. But he's running it by Coulson, says, I want a team and everything. And then they just start talking about stuff. Like how Coulson was going to join S.H.I.E.L.D. in this world, but turned down the guy. And he said that he was afraid of all the responsibility. And talking to Ward about it, Ward was brought in by Victoria Hand. And just seeing the differences between the real world of Ward and this Ward is pretty cool. And then, of course, Ward goes off with his team to try and find Daisy and everything. And uh, Simmons starts looking at the whole data that Trip brought in. And she was, like, making comments and everything, like, oh, I always meant to ask you about that. Like, what? Oh, I heard about you, about the Resistance, like, you're a big deal and everything. I was like, yeah, that kind of is. So she's looking through it, and she finds out that it's dark hole technology that is Project Looking Glass, uh, quantum energy, even on a bigger, kind of like a more complex scale than what was going on with EOIs. And she's figured out that what Ada is trying to do is create human tissue pretty much from nothing. She wants to create a body for herself to bypass her programming and be truly free. And that's a terrifying thought because she is doing crazy, homicidal, psychotic shit with, at, within the constraints of being not, of like to not hurt people. Given her free reign, granted, yes, she could choose not to do that stuff. But she could then just turn back upon her what she perceives as captors, and try and wipe everybody out. The kind of brain, well, if she gets in that body, she probably won't realize all of the limitations that'll come from that. The loss of computing power that she can have with, like, being an, an synthetic organism and all that. But that's what her goal is. She puts it together of Ivanov and the drilling platform in the Baltic, and it's like, okay, we need to go there. So it kind of splits off like this, and they kind of go off. And before Ward is able to go, he finds out about, well, he goes off, and then another agent comes in talking about how their agent's down, there's a commotion and everything, and, of course, Mac and Coulson are the ones that go to help Daisy and May. And, of course, they do their, like, little fight scene to take out the Hydra agents, and they have a standoff with Mac and May. And he's like, I don't trust her. And Coulson's like, I don't know why, but I believe we should trust this lady. So they get back to the base and kind of start figuring stuff out. They're like, okay, what should we do here? Because Daisy wants to pretty much leave the simulation and go. Whereas Coulson's like, okay, we can't get to your coordinates anyway. So let us just kind of like break things down that we need to. Free this world. So they come up with the idea to take the footage that May has from her body camera of the place exploding and broadcast it across all of Hydra to pretty much break Hydra down. So that's kind of where they're at with that scene. We see that Gemma and Trip are able to get to the drilling platform because they're like, oh look, there's a bigger complex down there, but they don't find anything. While this is going on, we see interspersed the superior and his lackeys are working on something. And, of course, it's made to look like it's in the simulation, but, of course, with the color differences between the framework and the real world, you realize that they're different and that he's working on the real world side to create the device to bring Ada into our world. While this is going on, we also see Fitz 
dealing with Ada being injured. And, of course, he tells the doctors to get out because she won't walk again and everything. And right as he's about to leave, because they were pretty much getting ready to track down everybody, she grabs hold of him and tells him to finish Project Looking Glass. So that sets him off. They had pretty much had the APB on Daisy in May, and he works on finishing the framework, which, the like, the design in the framework for Ada's device, which just really was him working on, like, a hologram to finish up the design, I guess, because it's evidently not being built in the same place in the framework as in the real world. And, of course, his father tells him about how they failed to capture Daisy and May, and they lost seven agents, and he's like, I don't care if he was a hundred, and then, of course, his father berates him for being hysterical, otherwise he would have left him with his mother, and then he goes to interrogate Radcliffe. And, of course, Radcliffe just bangs on him, calling him just scum, a pathetic drunk and everything, and wouldn't work nothing to fits, and then he just starts beating the crap out of Radcliffe. And they end on pretty much his dad saying that I've gotten proof. He talked about like things through the event, so I know he was conspiring with Daisy. He made a slip up, so I'll eventually get through to him. And Fitz is like, well, maybe the thing is we need to give him a reason to lit. And I'm like, okay, that's a good tactical idea, Fitz, if it wasn't for evil purposes. So he might probably use the Ada machine to give Radcliffe incentive to betray everybody else. It's like, listen, we've got a way to give you your body back. Now, of course, that works with Fitz because he's trying to save Ada and make sure that Ada's whole thing is not destroyed. I don't know how Ada would react to having Radcliffe back alive. So that enters a little kind of scenario. So then we also get to see that Fitz tells her that it's ready and asks to go with her to the real world. And she's like, I hope you say that. So that's kind of where we end off with like, Fitz and Ada, he's gotten his plans in motion to, like, go after Radcliffe to figure out what's going on. In regards to the Resistance, we see them taking over Bakshi's new studio to send off the footage and also make their own statement. So, we get this pretty cool scene where we see Ward talking with Daisy, and Ward's, like, trying to be like, okay, so this real-world thing, it happened. And he's like, well, when you leave, do I get my Scott back? Because we've seen throughout all this that, yes, Daisy and Simmons have been so warped by the interactions with the real Grant Ward that they put it onto this ward because, of course, hate is like, you can't escape your true natures. Now, that's, of course, true for real-life humans that are in the framework. But this ward has not given them any real cause to be as leery about, but it's still the guy with the face, and it's cool to see this different take on Ward, this Ward that could have existed, but didn't, and of course, he just wants Sky back for him, and of course, she's like, well, of course, she was Hydra, I don't know that that's more about her, but yeah, all relationships have their problems, I hope she does come back to you, and of course, Ward is going to say he's going to stay back and make sure that the broadcast goes on as long as possible and sacrifice himself that way because there's no way to make sure that Hydra doesn't manually shut it down. So they're going on, they're having Coulson do his spiel like I'm an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. getting all this, doing a really good job of presenting the facts of the whole Hydra situation, how they use alternative facts, how they lie to you, how they are brainwashing people in these facilities and everything and just killing people with impudy, like with the building and everything, and seeing that the Patriot was trying to save people, and just trying to get people to wake up and collectively get themselves together to stop this kind of thing from happening again. And of course, then the other agent that came to, like, tell him about Daisy and May, came and said, well, there's a lot of people outside the building, and they're getting ready for Texas, like, they're not here to, like, hurt us, I think they're trying to join us or something, it's like, holy crap, they've, they've definitely thrown a Big, big ass wrench in the Hydra's machine if they're able to get all the rest of the people to rebel against it. That is an interesting kind of thought to see that all these programs are going to be 
against the re rebelling against their programming to kind of overthrow the main forces of the framework. And it'll be kind of cool to see how that happens and what goes on with that, and how they're able to use that to their advantage. So that's kind of where we leave off with the episode, seeing everybody in their places, Fitz using his last endgame kind of thing to get Radcliffe to pretty much tell him what he's been talking to Daisy about, Ada getting close to her completion for getting everything ready. And that's a key thing that we saw as well. She's talking to the superior, everything's pretty much ready, and he wants to kill Coles, and we see this scene, and she's like, well, don't worry, I'll be able to get rid of my program soon enough, and so will you, and then you'll be able to make Phil Coulson bleed, and it's like, holy crap, what else will they accomplish? Could they bring these other programs into the real world? All the implications of, like, digitizing people, and then recreating bodies for them, but see, that's the thing, that's the thing that we learned from the dark hole. Nothing is free. Everything comes at a cost. What is the cost of creating this body for Ada? That's the cool stuff that I really hope that they get into if they're unable to stop it or what those repercussions will be and how that works out. So those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.